Hey guys, in this series of videos, I'm going to go over a few screen capture apps. There's quite a few options. People ask me all the time what I use, and everybody knows my favorite is ScreenFlow. But I'm going to go over uh, about three of them so you people can see what they're made of and you can make a decision based on how they work. The first one I'm going to start with is a not so popular one called ScreenFlick. So sit back and let me demonstrate this to you. As you can see, I have the icon down here. And I have I show you, I show you HD, and I have screen flow. Um, I don't know why they named it I show you HD because the regular I show you does HD too. HD is better, but uh, just the name confuses me. But we'll get into that when I get to I show you. So let's do screen flick, which is right here. It's thirty bucks, twenty nine dollars. And you can see we got our normal little floating window here that can control everything. Go to your video options or your record options right here. You can have your screen options, which is fixed resolution, where you can follow the mouse cursor. Um, you can set a capture rate of all the way up to 60 frames per second. If you're capturing something, then you need that frame per second. Of course, it's going to be bigger. You can do the audio, which is record system audio and re record um, microphone input from your eyesight, sound flower, or whatever else you got built in. Um, then there's the keyboard, um, which has all kinds of keyboard options from display mode. You can show one event at a time or multiple events, and this is how long you want to display it for, and what you want to display, characters, other keys, commands, and the background of the uh, text that's going to be showing you the, the typeface. And you have your mouse options, show mouse cursor or show mouse clicks. Um, I usually don't show my clicks. And there's the preferences, and you can do the general preferences of the interface in advanced, which is optimized for disk space or recording speed. You can do it however you want, depends on what you're looking for. Uh, disk space or quality, okay? It does a pretty good job. As you can see, the icon is up here. And the funny thing, the good thing about it is the CPU usage is very low when I use it. So let's go ahead and hit record and record this. Now it's going to ask me, what do I want to, part of my screen do I want to capture? I can capture an eighth of my screen, which is this little bitty box here. You can drag it yourself. A quarter of the screen, now it's this big. Uh, half of the screen, now we've got this big box. Of course, like I said, you can adjust it yourself. Three quarters and full screen. You can also have three quarters or half, and you can have it follow your mouse cursor. But let's opt for full screen and let's hit record. It'll count down. It'll start recording. This up here will turn red. It'll show you I have a timer plus a roundabout how big your movie is going to be uncompressed. Okay. Um, now you can go ahead. You can see the quality is pretty good. Now that we've, we've done it, you can see the CPU usage here. Even though I'm using ScreenFlow in the background, the CPU usage of ScreenFlick is very, very minimal. You can see this. Very minimal. So let's go ahead and stop recording. Our interface will come up. This is our movie. You can push play here to play it back in the canvas here if you want. Now you can go down here and you can select your codec. You can say choose. You can choose from H.264 to all this stuff from Ac Apple ProRes 422 high quality is what I use if I'm going to edit my video. If it's going to go straight to YouTube, I'll just use H.264. I've noticed there's not much difference between medium, high, and best quality. So when you're just uploading to YouTube, I'm telling you in between medium and high is the best because it saves space and there's not much quality difference. It's going to make a big difference on YouTube. And you can choose multi-pass or single pass. I always do single pass for YouTube unless it's something I really need people to really see because it really that don't make much of a difference for YouTube either. And then you can go to your dimensions here and you can see you can do HD. 1280 by 720 HD, 1920 by 1080 HD, 640 by 480 VGA and all these other sizes for like iPod and stuff. Or you can do a percentage or you can do custom and you can set your own. I'm going to pick 1280 by 720 HD and you can choose your audio options and now after you got your options set up you can hit save it'll ask you where you want to save it hit save as you can see it's going to go through here and compress the video this is one of the reasons why the CPU usage is so low because it compresses afterwards and you can see it takes really good advantage of my CPUs you can see how much it's using while it's compressing and the good thing about it is, after I've compressed this in, with these video settings, I can go back and choose different video settings and, and export it again. I don't have to re-record 
because with I show you, the original I show you, it compressed on the fly and you'd have to re-record or recompress that video. But with this one, as you can see, I set these settings out. And now it pops up my video and here is my movie. Right here. You can see it looks really plain, really good. Really good and crisp and saturated. Okay. And the resulting movie was just uh, about 30 megs and that was compressed at a pretty high quality okay that's, that's HD size too you're gonna get bigger size with HD okay so now we can go back to screen flick and now that we've had these settings we can choose maybe we want to export it as an MPEG okay like that we can say okay we'll save it we'll save it under a different name hit save now it's going to export the same movie as an MPEG. And I can compare these two compression settings, which ones I like the best, which one's biggest, which one's smallest. So if you're really looking for something simple, I mean, you can't record your eyesight along with it and stuff like that, but if it, it, it rivals I Show You. It doesn't rival I Show You HD, but it rivals I Show You big time. I think it's on par with I Show You HD. Definitely the same quality when it comes to exports. It's just I show you HD has a few more options than this does, but as far as just the ability to record it's up here and get a record. good recording and audio with it, it's great. See, here's the MPEG movie that we recorded of our desktop and movie. Then we can go to our finder, go to our movies, and check out our MPEG movie. The green at the beginning is, is because of the MPEG format. You notice the H.264 doesn't have the green at the beginning. And this is about a 40 meg video here at the HD 1280 by something something size so if you want to make that smaller like the old YouTube you just have to set it to 640 by 480 VGA and I'd choose H264 and I'd, I'd say OK and I'd say save save it under a different name yet again now we have a compression of a third type this one's 640 by 480 and you can see it's going a lot quicker and it'll probably be a lot smaller this was the old YouTube size. But if you export 1280 by 720 HD, it should take up the whole widescreen in YouTube. And now we have our 640 by 480 movie right here. You can see. And in the Finder, it is a about an 18 meg movie. So there we go. Um, that's ScreenFlick, wonderful, wonderful application. I have a hard time not recommending it over the regular I show you for 20 bucks. It's $10 higher, but you get, I think, nine more dollars worth of extras and quality export and quality recording and just um, better designed application altogether. ScreenFlick is a really good app for anybody who's wanting a cheap screen capture app that's really wanting to get the job done right, fast, and of good quality. It's a good place to start and I recommend it to anybody. Hope this review's helped and we'll see you next time.